Okay. Hey John. Good morning. Hey John. Good morning. Do you see something? John, those high-pitched noises, do they have something to do with you? Hmm. I'm hearing them. I can turn off my speakers and put on headphones, but... I don't know. Okay, I think you just mute for a second. Do what? You just mute yourself for a second. I'm hearing them. Can turn off my speakers and put on headphones, but. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a good thing. Can you. Do what? Just mute yourself for a second. I'm hearing now. I can turn off my speakers and put on headphones, but. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a good thing. Just mute for a second. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So now it's clear. I mean, basically, it was some kind of feedback with my own YouTube. Okay. Right, so Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Twelve minutes in advance. I'm a little backlit. I would like to somehow be less backlit. How do I do it? Oh, yeah, that's good. Can you bring my coffee from the microphone? Oh, that's good. Probably. Oh, that's good. Okay, no, 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 it's okay, boiling is fine. Hmm. Well, the same thing is that so far there is only one. I mean, I think it's required to find out where the difference is. Really? Well, I mean, John is on Zoom. Uh, could you check?
Hello, everybody. This is 10 o'clock in Iowa. Welcome to Yargus 2021. I do appreciate seeing your faces, unless you're hiding. Uh, I'm addressing my Zoom constituency. The thing is, uh, I cannot say everything both in English and in Russian, so basically this lecture, alas, is in English. Um, я не могу все говорить на двух языках, поэтому эта лекция будет по-английски. Um, и поэтому, um, если у русскоязычных слушателей появятся, появятся вопросы, то я с радостью на них отвечу. Просто я буду показывать картинки, если вы что-то не понимаете, просто спрашивайте, я расскажу. Итак, Yargus 2021, the second festival that because of the various circumstances was forced to be held online. And uh, we can all whine about this, these terrible times and the concerts are not working. There are no more, I'm not in my profession anymore. This pandemic took away my blah, blah, blah. It's all possible. Or you can sort of try to Think of it as an opportunity to do something else. And uh, of course, that kind of sounds na naively optimistic. But um, uh, one thing that we do, like this festival, is going to be extremely varied in terms of, uh, in terms of artists. So we normally, like when it's about the cost of uh, bringing someone to Iowa, we normally are limited, very limited. And this particular year, we're not limited. We can bring anybody we want. So anybody in the world who is interested in the Russian symphony guitar can be either on this Zoom call right now or just watching it on YouTube. So hello, the world. We are here with the Russian seven-string guitar. Um, there are some people who decided not to fly anymore, like Morten Falk. So he's, he cannot physically be in Iowa, but he can still play for our festival or lecture or teach master classes. So the world is interesting. Uh, for me personally, it was a, a year uh, when I decided since I'm not playing concerts, you know, I still kind of in an old believer kind of orthodox way, I, I still try to, uh, you know, to practice as much as I could. But um, I mainly wrote my book and writing my book turned out to be a very interesting and adventurous kind of uh, enterprise that brought lots of discoveries. And I'm going to talk about that, talk about what I found during this time. And uh, some of it is truly fascinating. So I will share my screen with you. Uh, okay. You can see my screen, yes? So uh, we have two parts pretty much. One Part one is about the early, early times, about the materials that were recently discovered and that uh, directly relate to the question that interests us all the questions on the origin of the Russian seventh string guitar. And for those of you who haven't quite explored this yet, like where the hell the Russian guitar came from, uh, I will share with you a page from a book uh, that I recycled many times, and by now I feel like I probably violate copyrights, even though it's my own creation. So, uh, I mean, it's a book by James Westbrook uh, on the, on the the century that created the guitar or something like that. And it was translated into Russian and I, I was asked to um, to write a chapter on the Russian guitar, which I did and which is a completely artificial limb in, in, in that book, like doesn't, doesn't fit a, a, at all. Uh, but nevertheless, it's one of few uh, recent publications on the Russian guitar. And so there the, we have this organological uh, kind of organological chart, which I probably showed to you or to some of you many times before. 
So here you have a guitar like that was brought to Russia in the middle of the 18th century um, by presumably Italian opera musicians. You know, they played an orchestra and they also played guitar. There are several examples of such people. The most notorious Carlo Canobbio. Um, and uh, at that time, end of the 18th century, uh, the guitar was five string. And interestingly enough, uh, like many other fashions, uh, the five string guitar kind of stuck in Russia longer than other places. So for example, um, Anton Loyer, a French composer who stayed in Russia until 1810, according to the major expert on Loyer, Eric Stenstavol, um, he never published anything in Russia that called for the six string. It was all five string. So that, that's the guitar. But otherwise, you know, that, otherwise it's very familiar to us. There are some things that are not completely, you know, in accordance of what we know today as the guitar. For example, uh, the fingerboard uh, is continued on the belly of the instrument. Those frets are gl glued to the belly. We, you know, we sit on the lutes and many other things. Um, uh, the pegs are more violin-like friction pegs, you know, more like on flamenco guitar today. But otherwise it was gut strung and, um, you know, not particularly exotic for us. The other ancestor was much more exotic the so-called English guitar. I talked about many times and I never had uh, an opportunity of a show and tell. But during the quarantine, there was some estate sale in, uh, in Canada and I was able to buy a uh, Citroen, uh, which says London, London 1761. Uh, so it's a pretty old instrument. You can see, you can see the beautiful Preston mechanism because you can only tune it with the help of this little key and uh, you can see metal strings unfortunately it's not in working condition so I cannot even tune it for you but but you know I have it so um what several several things that you some of you probably know I apologize for kind of saying the trivial but basically due to I mean the English guitar appeared in England in uh, the middle of the 18th century, uh, it appeared uh, as an instrument for noble women to play, and therefore the music uh, was uh, in such a harmonious kind of uh, way, in such a major key that um, keys that it was supposed to be very light, and it was supposed to be something like a, a kind of a simple domestic task similar to embroidery, that the woman could just do something with her hands, so she can play some easy tunes, usually in C major. Due to um, incredible influence of the British Empire at the time, uh, due to uh, the fact that it had, you know, its fingers in, in many pies around the world, this instrument was spreading in the 18th century uh, very wide. It reached uh, the New World. Music for the English guitar was published in Philadelphia, or uh, even in the 19th century. It reached uh, many locations, Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, here is an interesting moment, which also was a discovery, although had I been studying history a little better in high school, I probably would have been able to uh, understand it earlier. Um, there was such a state uh, west of Russia called Rzech Pospolita, or more commonly known, um, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. And that uh, entity basically, you know, united Poland and Lithuania, survived for several centuries and only completely disappeared after what is called the uh, third partition of Poland that took place in 1795. And that means that uh, Poland was divided between Austrian, uh, Russian and Prussian empires. and because of that, uh, somehow, for various reasons, various various uh, Polish uh, individuals, including really, really well known, like Michal Oginski, the author of the famous Polonaise, ended up in Russia. And that, of course, concerned uh, Ignaz von Hill, for example. Uh, and he wrote the first method, and we'll be talking about more. So basically, this, this um, 
chart, you know, that's dedicated only to organology. For example, I mean, those who don't read uh, Russian, I said the, the from the English guitar, you know, the the Russian guitar inherited the hanging, the raised fingerboard, the fingerboard that doesn't touch the soundboard, and it has a uh, convex, you know, crowned. Well, this one is not particularly convex, but it's a little bit, a little crowned fingerboard as well. And then the obvious thing that it got from the from the uh, you know conventional European guitar. So basically, my my idea my idea was always that um, you know it's uh, the Polish and Czech in case of Sifra and uh, and Ignaz von Held musicians who uh, contributed to this crossover. Uh, crossover meaning this hybrid instrument, Russian guitar that was built. Um, how exactly it happened and who was the first, it's hard to say. By the way, speaking of Polish and Czech, um, you know, even those who were Czech, such as Ignaz von Hel, they uh, or Andrei Sikra, they still came from uh, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. For example, uh, for example, Sikra was born in Vilna, which is Vilnius, Lithuania. So here are some earliest compositions, um, earliest compositions, earliest sources of the you know, gu Russian guitar music. Joseph Kamensky, the piece that was lost throughout the 20th century, was, was found like circa 2005. Uh, the story there is that it was found in a place uh, called Ulyanovsk on the Volga River. Um, also in Ulyanovsk, they found a uh, Svintitsky guitar journal, which was very interesting from 1803. And Ignaz von Held method was never really lost, and there are many different editions of it, uh, and I, I will talk about it in a moment. Guitar journals of Andrei Sikra, Sikra also are kind of early. And now, Nova Guitarna Schola by Johann Hanf. This is the discovery of the quarantine time. So I was under the impression that Hanf's method didn't survive. Uh, didn't survive the war, didn't survive the mess in the library. I don't know what, uh, but I, I thought that it no longer ex existed. And I was very surprised, uh, like, because, you know, because I couldn't go to the library at the University of Iowa because the library wasn't working. So I was able to just travel various places. And uh, in my mind, so to speak, <laughs> with my fingertips and various libraries and so on and so on. And I, in, in St. Petersburg, I just found this method. And of course, uh, I, you know, it's, it's the place called the uh, Publichka, Publichka Biblioteka in Mislotokova Shedrina. I asked uh, it to be, you know, to be scanned for me and it took forever. And they were saying that they cannot scan it for me, but they will scan it in general. And eventually, eventually it was scanned. And so what do we have? Well, first of all, we have this uh, advertisement. Uh, are you driving, Morten? You're the French francophone. You can probably read it for us. But basically, this is the advertisement that Hanf uh, wrote. First of all, Hanf uh, is known as a very good harpsichord player. It's some German who lived in um, in uh, in St. Petersburg. And so basically in this advertisement, he refers to a publication in Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung, uh, Leipzig 1801, uh, where some Mr. Scheidler advertises uh, a new improved French guitar. And so even, even in the newspaper advertising of his method, Hans takes the trouble to write out the, uh, the notes. And you can see those notes from the bottom to the top, and you can see that it's a fourth higher than our guitar. And in addition, the, the fifth string is tuned half step higher. So it should be E here, but it's F. So I, I'm using um, I'm using the web page of Andreas Michel, who uh, dedicated quite some time to Hanf and uh, sorry to, to Scheidler and uh, I cannot right now uh, 
remember all the details, but basically there are two uh, publications, one in, in the news, AMZ, Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung, and the other one is uh, some other journal. And what's interesting, they clearly are written by the same person and the text is very similar, but certain differences. So the earlier text actually describes this improved French guitar as being completely metal strong. And the Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung article describes that the first three strings or the first four strings are gut and the lowest three strings are silk metal wand. Well, here again, you can see the, the tuning. And that's what the instrument looked like. So, um, I mean, if you compare it with this, you know, it, it's actually kind of closer to, to, um, um, to the English guitar. But at that point, and that's all because Europe is like one big organism and they sort of, the instrument comes from Germany, but it's described as a French guitar. And indeed in France, there was its own tradition of, uh, you know, citron. So this is the newly Im improved, um, newly improved French guitar that Scheidler talks about. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Hunt doesn't have, uh, doesn't have a picture of the instrument he calls for. But here's the title uh, page of Hunt. So you can see that it's, uh, you know, it's 1805. So it's considerably later, like a couple of years later. Um, then uh, then uh, the earliest method by von Hell. Uh, and so this is uh, basically roughly says that uh, this is a guide, how everyone who plays some other instrument, that's kind of interesting because like Hunt himself is a major a keyboard figure. Uh, someone who plays some other instrument can by himself teach himself to play the newly improved seven string French guitar. And uh, th this method also includes uh, the understandable musical semiography and also preludes and pieces. And this, and this, this um, publication is dedicated to Elisaveta Alexei. Well, uh, the Princess Elizabeth, you know, German princess that at this point, because was the wife of uh, Alexander I, and therefore the Empress. Uh, this uh, this princess was kind of a patron of the arts. She was very musical and lots of music. And as we know, von Held also dedicated his method to her. Uh, the method, by the way, the Russian method, the method that we know, not the method that I will be talking about. So. Um, I mean, like a good uh, thorough uh, conference presenter in my shoes would have given this in English or both in Russian and in English. But since I'm completely overwhelmed with putting together uh, the festival <laughs> where you guys are playing, um, I'm not addressing the wide audience, I'm addressing those who are on Zoom with me. Uh, uh, I don't, I didn't have time for that. So I will just quickly uh, retell. I mean, one, one thing to understand is Hanf's guitar method is pretty much the only pedagogically solid, um, pedagogically solid, uh, thorough, uh, sophisticated method that was published in Russia. Neither held nor, no, uh, God forbid, Kushanov Dmitrievsky come close. Uh, it's extremely comprehensive. It uh, talks about every aspect. And as I will show presently, the only place I thought that talks about the uh, stringing of the Russian guitar, like what material of strings were used. That place, that that place in Koshanov Dmitrievsky method, as I will very presently show, was actually lifted or plagiarized from Han, and therefore has very little validity. Uh, so he says that uh, not long ago uh, there was uh, in in France they improved um, improved the guitar that was. Uh, accepted in other places, especially in Germany. And it has, this is an interesting uh, sentence, it has uh, undoubtedly uh, some ad advantages over the usual seven string guitar. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, th that means that uh, Hanf was definitely not the inventor of the guitar. Uh, 
you know, but he was writing at that moment when the usual guitar, the guitar that, you know, that Marco plays, for example, uh, was, uh, was already born. So it was already around. He just kind of, with German stubbornness, he says, no, there is a better guitar. And yeah, I will, I will, I will show you, you know, whether the guitar better or not, we will never find out because it didn't take off. But we definitely can say that his method is by far better. So basically, uh, the argument that this is better is uh, he said he lays it out here uh, through the tuning because since the uh, fifth uh, string is tuned uh, semitone higher than on the usual seven string guitar, uh, it you don't have to use your left hand thumb to go to the fifth string. I mean, that's a very uh, peculiar kind of, I mean, I mean, most of you didn't know that it was even possible to, to go with, over this fingerboard to, to reach for the fifth string. Like, why would anybody do that? And also, at the first side, it doesn't seem kind of right, so why, why would that change things? Well, uh, you should look at it maybe with, uh, from a different angle. You know, uh, it does help. I mean, just if you look at um, the bass movements, uh, the fact that, for example, the lowest three strings on the six string guitar are tuned in fourth, that's actually very advantageous for playing the key of D or A or E, all right? And so, uh, like, you also have three basses, in, you know, tuned in four. Uh, that type of tuning on the seventh string guitar is also very often used as curvatura in which um, in which the fifth string is tuned to, to a C. I don't know. Have you have you heard about it? Uh, it is uh, commonly used by those who play by ear. So there is not that much music written for the, for that tuning. But I came across of some. And then uh, Hunt goes on saying that uh, the other advantages are because of the range, because uh, because because of the range, because it's, it's fourth higher, it better suits, better, it's easier to transcribe from piano fourth, uh, violin, clarinet, flute, and, and more. So basically he is convinced that that's the guitar to, to stay. And of course he's convinced wrong because it didn't stay. Then there is a, a unique thing, uh, a unique thing in instruction how to hold the guitar. So guys, if you, have a guitar and you don't know how to hold it, you know, just, just ask Johan uh, Hanf. Uh, so in order for the left hand to have freedom, um, uh, to have more freedom uh, while you're playing, uh, for that particular purpose, uh, there is a ribbon that is connected to, well, basically he describes a strap, to both, both ends of the guitar that is, uh, goes across the shoulder, as you uh, take take the guitar uh, so that the pegs are at the level of your shoulder, which is not unusual, uh, just adjust the ribbon so it's not too long and too short, uh, and the guitar will be in such a position that you'll be able to uh, play sitting down, standing up, or walking. Uh, uh, during the playing, you only need to the first uh, first joint of the thumb of the left hand uh, hold the, the neck of the guitar, so that you will uh, this way uh, you know prevent the guitar from falling down or or swinging. Uh, if you hold the guitar like that, you will get complete freedom in both hands. Okay, then I don't understand, so we move on. Okay, so uh, uh, here the advice on the string. Of the seven strings that are plucked, uh, sorry, not plucked, that not shipayutz and not shitayutz, uh, that are uh, counted from the thick to the thin. I mean, by the way, that's very important. They always call the seventh string, they call it the first string. 
And uh, it's very important because recently there was a s circulated fake of a piece supposedly written by Zimmerman with a fake uh, manuscript from the 19th century. And there it said uh, the fifth string should be tuned, you know, it, it was written in the pre-revolutionary kind of writing with the hard science, but it said that the, the fifth string should be tuned to whatever, or, or the fifth string should be tuned to A. The point is, um, the point is uh, just that uh, circumstance show, uh, exposed the fake because the strings were counted from the other end at the time. Um, the first three are uh, the first three are silk uh, that are wound with a with a uh, copper copper um, wire uh, covered with silver and the last are Roman strings. Well, we all know that Roman strings are simply, 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 simply gut strings. I mean, they were always called the Roman strings. Then there is an instruction how you should make sure that the strings on the guitar are, uh, you know, are all of the right tangent. It says that the two thick strings, they don't particularly last uh, and on, uh, the, the, they don't have a nice pedal but uh, the, the thin strings just make too much noise when you touch them uh, so basically it gives you a method how you know trying various strings by, by, with your finger you know you just you should basically come up with a, with a, with an even with even tangent Um, well, th these uh, those of you who read Russian uh, can uh, notice that Kushanov Dmitrievsky completely plagiarized the the things about um, the things about. Uh, I mean, it's it's not like he plagiarized ideas. Uh, I do believe that Kushanov Dmitrievsky didn't even understand what he was uh, actually. Uh, plagiarizing. I mean, like up to a point, I, I begin to wonder if he could read, because, um, well, I mean, it, it, to me, it's completely clear that if on a say chord guitar, on a small guitar, you can have first four strings, you can have pure uh, gut. It absolutely doesn't mean that that on a full size a Russian guitar, you have four strings that are pure gut. So the method to hold the guitar. He, again, he exactly uh, uses the same wording about about the ribbon and so on and so on. So I mean, this is you know this this publication alone just kills any respect that I could have had for Kushan Dmitrievsky, but honestly, I never had. So uh, examples of pieces pieces from Hans anthology, and it's an interesting anthology. This music is kind of a hybrid between um, many things that are written for the English guitar and many things that will be written for the uh, Russian guitar. Um, hybrid in a sense, I mean, for, uh, it does explore different keys, as you can see. Uh, but, um, and it's more complicated, but it's still uh, not quite as uh, melodically advanced as the best examples from the same time. Sikhra, uh, well, Sikhar basically, <laughs> like there's not that much, not that much going yet in 1805. Uh, but you can still, still see that, I mean, first of all, it's very intelligently written music, you know, with obvious limitations and so on. Um, the thing about, you know, using it for the, you know, for the nowadays, for the, for the, for the seven string guitar performance you know basically you should transcribe it uh, down the fourth and then you can play it on a small guitar on a chord guitar and you can play it on a big one but i mean basically playing this on on a full-size guitar just directly from this page for most people wouldn't quite work well here's another example of fine writing you notice that um, that he has those interesting dots are they what they think they are? It's kind of hard to tell, and I, and I haven't studied his method enough to 
to be sure. I think it can mean just simple staccato. Like if you look here, you know, two, it's, two notes are slurred and one note is separate. Uh, later, especially in, in the compositions of Mikhail Vysotsky, it becomes the indication of the harp effect. Uh, at this point, I would like to address the Russian-speaking uh, part of the listeners. Если кто-то из русских слушателей хотел иметь какие-то вопросы, что я что-то непонятно сказал, вы можете либо спросить в чате, либо просто спросить голосом. Это не возбраняется. Okay, so we are done with uh, um, with uh, Hanf for now. Let's move on to uh, Ignaz von Hell. Again, everything uh, starts from a newspaper advertising. So in, in this newspaper, uh, Moscow Chronicle, as I translated, or Moscow Vedomosti, of 1798, I don't remember chapter and verse right now, but it doesn't really matter, um, von Held advertised his method, and he basically described both in French and in and in Russian, he describes that it's a method in which uh, everybody without a teacher can uh, learn the, well, it's a very complicated sentence, I'll try to remember. The English guitar was six or seven metal strings, or the Spanish guitar with six or seven uh, gut strings. So what's interesting about this wording, uh, that it appears, you know, since, since the method, you know, if it, if it has any value, you should basically respect the tuning. So we're, it's natural to assume that both uh, varieties of the guitar, according to Held, are tuned the same way, the, our usual, our familiar G major tuning. And the only way he distinguishes between the two instruments is what they look like and what, the, what kind of string material he has. So uh, this method, from 1790, uh, 1798 was never found. I mean, had, had we found it, we would have immediately claimed that, aha, so this is the earliest, uh, you know, earliest publication for the Russian seven string guitar. But we didn't find this method. Instead, we have the method dedicated to Elizaveta Alexeyevna, you know, and all of you who, you know, occasionally visits uh, seven string that you know, you, you, this page must be familiar to you. Well, Elizaveta Alexeyevna uh, did ascend to the throne um, in 1802. And so uh, basically the, the, that kind of shows that uh, he, if he calls her already the empress, that, that uh, this method cannot be earlier than 1802. Um, this is de definitely a, an interesting uh, publication. Uh, the other thing is interesting is that uh, Held was an extremely uh, lucky guy. He was a prisoner of war because of the, uh, you know, because of partition of Poland, because of participating in Kostyushka's uprising. He ended up in um, in prison of Catherine the Great, but then eventually she died. In 1796, anyway, she died and her son became the emperor, Paul I, and because of his problematic relationship with his mother, he released political prisoners. And that seems to be kind of a desperate moment in Hell's life because where to go, you know, what, what can he do? Well, that's the moment when he remembered his musical talents. He couldn't continue his military career. Well, I mean, his military, his career was up and down, and it, he continued. I mean, he was actually extremely energetic and successful, um, and uh, he really managed. Like he very recently was released from prison, but uh, he managed to become uh, very close to the court. So that's why he, you know, the advertisement for the um, for his method in 1798 was published in Moscow Chronicle. So he lived in Moscow and then uh, he moved in to St. Petersburg just in time to give this method to uh, Elizabeth Alexeyevna. But interestingly, another discovery that I'm not really prepared to share with you right now is a set of parts for uh, coronation music. Can you believe it? Held <coughs> wrote uh, orchestral coronation music for Elizabeth Alexeyevna and one particular piece 
on glaze, you know, not, not too super sophisticated, but one particular dance from there is actually in this method that all of you know. Well, here's a story kind of that I can make emphasis on human interest. Um, that place in Ulyanovsk on the Volga River, um, you know, it was discovered by a Russian rock star and now uh, very established Baroque violinist, interesting story, Andrei Vyshetin, who was uh, traveling on a boat, I suppose, and <clears throat> when he was in Ulyanovsk, they showed him the library, which supposedly belonged to Karamzin, Nikolai Karamzin, the great Russian historian. historian. And there suddenly there was some, there was the Kamensky Sonata, there was Vintitsky journals, there were several other very interesting uh, compositions, including Han Doshkin, but also there was this method. And the list was given to me early in 2000. So, well, I mean, I, I, had, I knew that. And somehow, stupidly, I uh, automatically assumed that it was the method that we already knew. So for no particular reason, I didn't ask a copy of it. Well, um, now the participant of our festival, who will be in the sec, I think, no, I think in the fourth, I, I'm already, it's hard to, to count. I mean, basically the concept of this festival, Yargus 2021, dedicated to, um, to the revival in Russia. Evgeny Aksionov of Kazan, a young guitarist, uh, extremely talented, uh, particularly particularly like about him the fact that he's more than just a guitarist, he has an education in conducting and so on. So he uh, asked me, like, uh, I, I want to also to do some research, but, uh, you know, what can I do in, in Kazan? We don't have anything in Kazan. I said, well, uh, I just looked on the map, you know, and Ulyanovsk is only several hours by car from Kazan, uh, which in, in the context of a big country like Russia uh, is not very far. And I said, like, why don't you go to Ulyanovsk? And, so anyway, he got the list from there again, and there was this method, and I immediately understood now that it's of great interest. So that interesting part about this method uh, is that uh, it uses the same wording, uh, the same words that held, had <clears throat> in his 1798 advertisement. But this is not the 1798 uh, edition, because that one came from um, that one came from Moscow, and this one already, as you can read uh, in the bottom, uh, St. Petersburg. And then I think it was, I mean, right now I cannot really see it very well, but I think it was uh, supposed to be engraved by Dittmar, and then Held crossed it out and with his own hand wrote Held. So, does it tell us a story? Well, in order to understand this, you should realize that um, the greatest treasure of any music publisher of the time were those metal plates that were engraved that, that were very expensive. <clears throat> so my understanding is that this particular print that is today in Ulyanovs, <coughs> excuse me, uh, probably, um, probably uh, is later than uh, the, the Russian version of the method. But um, nevertheless, um, nevertheless, uh, um, it probably is printed from the old uh, plates, and that's something that they cannot prove because, held, uh, you know, because no plate numbers are used, so we cannot really date it very well. We can just uh, kind of guess, make an educated guess. Um, well, here he explains how to, you know, the right hand fingerings very nicely, very nice passages. Uh, very nice uh, scales. I mean, look, you know, unlike, you know, unlike the English tradition, so many, so many distant keys. Um, you know, the same thing with with flats. I mean, there are more flats than I, I thought was necessary. Uh, very useful scales in, in in thirds. I mean, that's a good exercise for anybody. I mean, it's still true. And very good exercises in uh, six, which uh, which also travels from one method to another, including even the method of Mikhail Vysotsky. The repertoire is uh, of 
great interest because it doesn't seem to be uh, to correspond with what was in demand. So basically, uh, my working hypothesis is that Hild, um, uh, Hild didn't understand the market yet, or maybe he did understand the market, but he already had those plates and he, he thought that he would capitalize on them anyway. Even though this type of uh, publication, you know, romances with French uh, words, I mean, they were not not common anymore. I mean, that was very common for the publishers of guitar journals who published it for five string guitar, which were Millet and Hinglaze, Millet in Moscow and Hinglaze in St. Petersburg. I mean, that feels like it came from, from their publication. But uh, when it comes to later publications, uh, they're rare, like seven string guitar and voice and lyrics in French, very rare. You can see that nice settings, you know, nice, uh, nice command of guitar. You can see, say that. Well, that's the piece uh, variations on Iodenina. Uh, Sikhra uh, has a variation set from also circa 1799, <clears throat> very, very different one. But this one has its merits, and you know, and it has its uh, <clears throat> kind of expressive moments, you know, short notes, legato, and I mean, basically. I think it's a high quality piece. Okay, and that's where I stop sharing. So this is the first half of my presentation today, you know, the discovery of two methods uh, that shed light on the origin, uh, on, 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 you know, the genesis of the guitar. And uh, I would don't necessarily say that we should make, take a break, but um, I'm ready to answer questions if there are any. Okay, can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, call uh, me. <laughs> uh, I mean, just ask what, what do you think? Oops. Is it just Morton? Did we all get frozen? No, Martin. Sorry, you're 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 stuck. What? Oh, what did it say? Okay. Yeah, uh, it's also possible to ask a question in chat on on YouTube. So, the the you know those. No, uh, Martin. Can you? reiterate we didn't hear the question okay i was asking uh, the hanf method because uh, i didn't know about that one so i was interested uh, uh what do you think about the quality of the music uh, especially the adagio that you shared with us looked interesting but uh, yeah, what do you think music, yeah i mean um i mean i know the quality of the composer which is very high except that the only piece that i have seen uh, is by um, by him uh, is a keyboard set on a var uh, variation set on the song Vinyat uh, Menya Narodio. I'm blamed blamed by the people. That also recorded, um, also varied, published by by Axionov. I mean, uh, it frequencies you know various various repertoires for the guitar. Uh, extremely extremely good com command of the instrument. He he published a sonata for keyboard and obligato violin and that one is uh survives but i haven't seen it and it was reviewed in uh allgemeine musikalische zeitung very positively like you know so a piece comes comes out in st petersburg and reviewed but so in other words we know that it is this is a very good composer um and i would continue the sentence who writes didactic music for the guitar? So he's not—he's not like he—he he doesn't have all of his eggs in the basket of guitar playing. So he writes music that is definitely very solid and smart, but it's not like not super interesting. But nevertheless, I mean, a musician of your caliber, Morton, you can make music out of it for sure. So I will gladly, gladly share it with you, but promise that you will transcribe it the fourth down. Because it will not be 
pleasant sight going all the way up and not having bases. All right, any other questions? It could be, could be. So I didn't tickle your imagination, guys. Stefan? No questions. I thought I was. I, I can ask one more then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I already asked you this one in private uh, a week ago, but <laughs> to share with the others. Because uh, you, you, you shared with me the, the von Held uh, method. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I thought was interesting was that uh, compared to the, the famous edition, well, for once, it's completely different music. So uh, when he published another edition, just a few years later, he composed totally new music. So that's interesting. But also that in the earlier edition, in the French edition, he is uh, very fingered the scores because in the later one, there's almost no fingerings. But in the earlier one, there's a lot of fingerings especially for, for that period, it's unusually fingered. Well, I mean, th this is actually not a question, but a very useful comment. And, <laughs> and, and uh, I, I think it could be a, a contribution to the argument that uh, the French me method is earlier. I mean, not, not this physical print, but, but the material and basically the metal plates, most of them. I mean, basically what probably happened is that um, Held moved to St. Petersburg with his, you know, heavy plates under his arm. And uh, Dietmar, I think, the German um, publisher, he made the, the front, uh, you know, the title page for the new edition. Uh, he didn't really have to change much there. He just added his name that Held crossed out. So in other words, um, you know, the instrument was just about very new, very very unexplored and that it needed fingerings in 1798 or whereabouts um yeah i mean not only uh, the 1802 one dedicated to elizaveta alexeyevna but also uh, you know there is thematically there are there is a uh, polonaise uh, a piece in the method in russian uh, i think for two voices and it's just a kind of love declaration to Elizabeth Alexeyevna, so she's all over the place. I mean, basically, um, this whole thing was a sudden opportunity, and that sudden opportunity worked out. He just moved to Petersburg. He, uh, you know, wrote those uh, the coronation music. I mean, why held? Like, who, who is held? There are great composers at the time in in Petersburg, but but held was probably more more sneaky, more 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 charming. You know, interesting guy. All right, no questions. Fine. So let's move on to uh, the second, to the second part, which will be in a little shorter. Um, so uh, we have uh, here Artur Haratyan, uh, my dear friend from Moscow, and he will maybe help me out uh, presenting the the Arekhov uh, research that w this is about. So uh, for those of you who doesn't know, and I'm looking at your names, and I think all of you know, Sergei Arekhov uh, was a, an event in the 20th century that uh, completely eclipsed uh, the Russian guitar in general. So like anybody who was doing Russian guitar, pretty much anybody, 98% of people who were doing Russian guitar in Russia, for them, the only reason to play the instrument was because they could play pieces by Arekhov, and, uh, and that was it. So the problem is that the legend uh, went the way that saying that Arekhov was a genius improviser, but he never wrote anything down. He didn't have to, you know, and and therefore whatever he, uh, whatever people play, uh, was at some point uh, written down by somebody, and the word for that is siom. So uh, like very very high quality uh, siome uh, done by. Uh, another very good friend of mine, uh, Vladimir Nesterov, who really figured out a lot about Arekhov's uh, style and Arekhov's fingerings, and he was able to really, really work with it somehow. Uh, Before that, there was a whole industry of my other good friend, uh, Pyotr Sedarchuk, who lives in Kharkov. 
and who was um, I think only now I noticed that my my image is reversed so like this is my left hand but for some reason it appears as my right hand is it true like this is a guitar which I play with my right hand hmm interesting I, I don't know which button to push to it's a little annoying I, and the only reason I noticed it because when I was showing uh, music by Rekhov, it was in, in mirror image. Uh, you couldn't read it. Um, which button did I push? Anybody knows? And you go to the video settings. No, no, don't do that. We see it's perfect. For us, it's uh, on the right way. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, yes. Perfect. Yes, yes. I promise. Oh, there is a question whether the... It's because you are on the other side of the planet. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, <laughs> something about... All right, okay, forget it. Doesn't matter. Stefan is asking whether this will be on YouTube, and yes, it will. it is on YouTube, and it will stay on YouTube, if I understand it correctly. Uh, okay, so basically, uh, and then... Uh, so Sidarchuk uh, in Kharkiv, he, I don't think he can actually do it himself, but he has a dear friend, Volodya Polivanov, who is a very, very kind of uh, gifted uh, person uh, regarding his ears. And he, although he doesn't play seven string guitar, he actually made, uh, did Siome or just no, uh, wrote a lot of Aryakov's music down and put fingerings. And uh, Sidarchuk, a very kind of entrepreneurial fellow, was selling kind of Xeroxed uh, editions, you know, with some art work, some really nicely written. I mean, I wanted to show you some, but I couldn't find. And finally, it culminated in this publication that I'm kind of responsible for partially. It has, uh, you know, many, many pages of Siome. And so uh, that was very, kind of a very sad picture because we all understand that if somebody writes a composition and then plays it for uh, you know plays on stage and somebody writes it down the chances that you will write it down what was written on the first page um, are close to zero something will be different some rhythms will be different well since there was that legend that he never wrote anything down uh, that was the best the best we could get until recently uh, the doubt began to uh, began to show up that perhaps he actually did write things down and just not very willingly shared it. Uh, other people didn't rush to share it. So basically, Artur um, and his uh, mentor and friend, uh, Boris Kim, they um, located a number of Arekhov's manuscripts. And uh, the project is that Artur Haratyan, Boris Kim, and my humble self Oleg Timofeev are working on the edition. So basically, uh, now we are going, sorry, it's not what i trying to do. How do I do it? Oh. Yeah, so that now I'm going to show some. So, you see it? You see my screen? Guys? Um, Uh, can you, I mean, you see the screen? Yes, no? Yes, good. Um, okay, so this is uh, the piece that's called Troika, uh, but here it's called Yamshik. What's interesting, this is Arekhov's hand, and what's interesting is the date. It says uh, September 9th, 57. Arekhov was born in 19. 35 so he was 24 years old and it's probably one of his most ambitious uh, most amazing pieces ever written so you know like you know pushkin was killed in the duel when he was 37 you know some people develop early interesting thing is that it, this piece doesn't shed light on on the playing you know because it has all the articulation but it doesn't have the or it doesn't it doesn't have any fingerings so when we, if we, when we, uh, Artur, we work on this thing, we will publish it? Yes, 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 it's already ready. What, and in this case, the question is, where is the application? 
Аппликатуру ставит, вот, на тройку ставил Борис Андреевич. Okay, so Борис Андреевич Ким provides the, the fingerings for this. And Борис actually worked very closely with Орехов himself, and they knew each other very well, so he's a major expert. But, of course, this is not completely Орехов, this is Орехов with some uh, addition. Okay. Well, this is, uh, uh, Artur, is this uh, Arekhov's hand or is it Kim's hand, you know? Это рука Арехова? Не помню. This is a song, не пробуждая воспоминаний. Да, да, это его рука. Это его рука. So it's written by Arekhov. Here, actually, those manuscripts uh, show uh, how the piece actually came to its final um final form that we know and i mean obviously you know you can you can see it in this book too uh and in the definitely in <coughs> nisterov's um, editions but basically you can see that the uh, the direction the uh the order variations changed and originally didn't have one of the variations so um Like here, we don't see one particular variation. You know, you can see. It. I mean, basically, are kind of the level of sketches. Suddenly, there is a piece unrelated. Um, this is related, and this is in different ink. This is a variation that's missing. Я не помню, Артур, это вот это конкретно, это вторая что ли вариация? Да, это вторая вариация. So this is the second variation that in, in that set, uh, you know, early is not. So in other words. Uh, I mean, and here you see uh, in Arekhov's hand, I mean, the person who supposedly never wrote things down, you can see incredible attention to detail. And once you start actually uh, reading, uh, <clears throat> reading from the, this music, you know, you realize to what extent uh, he was, uh, you know, he was guitar friendly, he understood the instrument, he understood human uh, anatomy. So this is, uh, you know, I honestly, uh, most of my life, As a seven-string guitarist, I tried to uh, to prove to the world that I don't need Arekhov, and that <clears throat> there is plenty of excellent music from earlier times, or we can compose new music and so on. Uh, just as a kind of, uh, just as a reaction to this kind of pandemic uh, of uh, Arekhov uh, obsession, you know, that absolutely everybody had to play Arekhov and nothing else. But I mean, after after ha having ex inspected these manuscripts, I realized that they have to be published. So what Artur, um, Boris Andreevich Kim and I are doing, this is not, um, we don't, you know, we don't do the, like, opera omnia. Uh, that, that is not what we are after. We are, we are going to work only on the pieces that somehow um, survive in, in Arekhov's hand, and we are going to publish it in tablature, as well as staff notation, so pretty much anybody can get this music and start playing it. So that's our ambition. Uh, some pieces are, you know, unfinished. Some some are just fragments. We're not completely sure about our editorial policy. You know, here is a nice uh, list of songs that he's supposed to accompany, and uh, and the train, uh, you know, car nine, train number two seventy seven, October seventh at ten fifty in, in the evening. So, this is the world in a minute. Uh, I, uh, you know, Artur will be playing a piece, actually two compositions by Arekhov in our festival, one in the Romani concert, because the concert of Romani music, gypsy music, this year is different. This year we do not necessarily limit it to those who, who are Romani by blood, but we invite anybody who plays uh, in the gypsy style, you know, anybody who plays music inspired by Romani music, participate. Because our priority this year is that they play it on the seventh string guitar. And so there are some really amazing Romani performers. Uh, of course, Vadim Kropakov uh, and his nephew, although he doesn't play the Russian guitar. Um, and uh, another very interesting Romani guitarist, um, unfortunately represented very, with very little music, uh, and, and a lot of, you know, as 
the Roma say Gadje for playing in the Romani style, Romanes. And uh, that's what uh, will be one presentation of Artur and the other uh, is in the, in the concert dedicated to the revival of the Russian guitar in Russia. So, any questions? Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. So, so our neighbor who is watching this, probably in the car, probably driving to California, um, he's asking where one could see those instruments. And of course, uh, those instruments, the old Russian guitars, the best see, uh, the, like speaking of the Romani uh, individuals, uh, the best place to see is in, on the website of Ivan Bariev, uh, who uh, collected the record number of the seven string guitars bob this is especially for you uh you can just uh, stop by our house i will show you what i have i mean that's you know not quite a museum but quite a few of them any other questions vanya juk greetings from iowa city it's a great honor to to have you among um among our Festival participants. Um, no questions? Do you know what to do? Well, uh, what you need to do, what everybody needs to do, I guess that's something that I will say in both languages, you need to uh, go, come back to this channel in two hours because we're going to have uh, our first concert. And this first concert is quite breathtaking. There are four students from Sweden, four students of Morten Falk. He actually probably has done, you know, how should I put it, second more influential Russian guitarist in the world. <laughs> Guess who is the first? Uh, <laughs> but I mean, like in, in, in terms of number of disciples, he actually outstrips me. And, um, and, and they're all great. Some of them actually are on the Zoom call. I mean, uh, specific quality of revival in Europe um, and, and the young talents from Europe is extremely fine musicality and fine musical tone. But then, of course, there are Russian geniuses. Where can you go without them? So there, there is a very stunning uh, young lady who is also here, Tanya Bistigolnikova, and, uh, and um, a very ambitious 11 years old Ruslan Nurulin, whom you probably already, already have heard. So basically this is going to be a great concert. So don't go very far from your computer. Just get popcorn, a beer if you're in Europe, and don't drink too early if you're in the United States. Don't drink and drive if you're going to California. Thank you. Thank you, Maestro.